Little update here on the bees. Lots of dead bees in these colonies here, societies. Um, but there's good news. A few different pieces of good news. One is that I have scores and scores of pounds of honey and resources to start the next bee um, societies with. I also have a lot of comb honey I can sell um, to pay for to pay for some more bees. And luckily, I know a guy who has treatment-free bees available in Vermont in the Champlain Valley. He's an apprentice of Kirk Webster's, I guess, and he has bees, uh, a few colonies, so I can get started. But for again. anyone who's interested, um, I have I'll have comb honey available. A lot of comb honey. I'm probably gonna sell about twenty dollars per comb honey container. And I'm probably gonna put it in glass, not plastic. So I'll put a My link profile for that. Um, just a little note on the bees. These tops, these new covers that I made last year, they're holding up. We just had a super heavy rain after tons of snow, cold, no evaporation, and this is all really dry. So these um, wari, ware tops are working out very, very well. They really want to be generous. The overhang at least of like two to three inches on each side. Metal flashing on the top. I added that last year. Really glad about that. And they're staying very, very dry. I'm happy with the hive design. Um, I don't have disease. It's a mite loading, which is, you know, trying to do treatment free with only a few years of experience isn't realistic. I, I, I've learned that the hard way. Um, so I may actually use some thymol or some formic acid to treat um, next year, we'll see. As people have said, which I'm paying attention to more now, if you don't have bees, you're not getting anywhere, so you do need bees. We um, live in a very imperfect world with tons of stress on the bees, and um, getting to, to a treatment-free situation seems really realistic, but not immediately. Could take three, five, ten years. Um, but I think I'm moving in a good direction. Yeah. So much food planted for the bees, a lot of food slash medicine for the bees um, in the form of flowers and, and herbs. Uh, so I think we'll get there. We have a good location, two locations that are really good for them, but we, we need, need to, to, give, to them. give them some crutches uh, off the bat. Had th a three year good run with no treatment, no naturally drawn comb, like really pure approach. And now the bees have uh, failed, you know, late summer. So these are the kind of resources that are in these hives now. Um, just dozens of pounds of beautiful full comb, as organic as it gets, no foundation, totally naturally drawn honeycomb. Oh, <laughs> look at this dark honey here. This has a lot of comfrey and early season medicinal goodness in it. This is going to be such special honey um, this whole medium box is loaded so there's about you know, solid 50 pounds maybe a little more of Holcomb Holcomb look at all of this beautiful honey such such gorgeous stuff and it, it's amazing if you're if you haven't had whole comb it's so much different than just regular. This is the comb in here. This is the stuff. Mm. <laughs> it's so good. Um, so I'm gonna send out the full comb, especially early season. It's really special. Um, take a look if you want it. So I'm gonna keep and not sell any of the frames that were part of the brood's nest. So the brood nest. So they're gonna have a huge jump start. the new colonies, um, with many frames of existing resources. With many frames of existing resources to work from, plus honey, pollen, comb itself um, and the wax by the way on this stuff is really valuable it's one of the reasons comb honey is more expensive um, keeping mice and uh, insects out of this especially ants out of these deeps now that I'm saving these for the 
spring bees. It's going to be an interesting challenge. Hmm.